I'm Tim Tyler, and today I'll be discussing AIXI, a proposed model for synthetic intelligent agents. AIXI is a design for constructing intelligent agents which, which was originally developed by Marcus Hutter. It is largely based around a formalization of Occam's razor, known as Solomonov induction. Hutcher introduces the idea in an abstract as follows. Sequential decision theory formally solves the problem of rational agents in uncertain worlds if the true environmental prior probability distribution is known. Solomonov's theory of universal induction formally solves the problem of sequential prediction for unknown prior distribution. We combine both ideas and get a parameter-free theory of universal artificial intelligence. We give strong arguments that the resulting AIXI model is the most intelligent unbiased agent possible. We outline how the AIXI model can formally solve a number of problem classes, including sequence prediction, strategic games, function minimization, reinforcement and supervised learning. The major drawback of the AIXI model is that it is uncomputable. To overcome this problem, we construct a modified algorithm, AIXITL, that is still effectively more intelligent than any other time and length bounded agent. Firstly, I'd like to say that this work is great, and I'm very grateful for the efforts of Marcus Hutter and Shane Legg in this area. However, I do have some criticisms as follows. First problem is that AIXI has no representation of its own brain. Elias Yedkowski has previously pointed this problem out, and so, in his own words. Ultimately, AIXI's decision process breaks down in our physical universe because AIXI models an environmental reality with which it interacts instead of modelling a naturalistic reality within which it is embedded. Now, Hutter describes the AIXI agent and the environment as, as Turing machines having mutually inaccessible work tapes. Here is a diagram of the situation. The AIXI agent is not embedded in the same universe as its environment. Rather, it exists in a separate region and interacts with its environment via sensory and motor channels. Why does this matter? Any attempt at implementing AIXI would actually have to embed the agent within its associated environment. However, the agent has no conception of the location of its own brain. That means that if you told it to mine silicon atoms, then at some stage its mining claws would take a great chunk out of its own brain, and it would come to a sticky end. To function properly, AIXI would have to be told not to injure its own brain, nor to sever any of its sensory or motor cables, and not to take actions that might endanger its own power supply and its support infrastructure. While this is a flaw, it is probably not a terribly serious one. The most obvious remedy is to teach AIXI not to do those things in the first place. The second problem is the wirehead problem. Marcus Hatter discusses this problem explicitly as follows. Another problem connected but possibly not limited to embodied agents, especially if they are rewarded by humans, is the following. Sufficiently intelligent agents may increase their rewards by psychologically manipulating their human teachers or by threatening them. This is a general sociological problem which successful AI will cause, which has nothing specifically to do with AIXI. Every intelligence superior to humans is capable of manipulating the latter. In the absence of manipulatable humans, for example where the reward structure serves as a, serves a survival function, AIXI may directly hack into its reward feedback. Since this is unlikely to increase its long-term survival, AIXI will probably resist this kind of manipulation, just as most humans do not take hard drugs due to their long-term catastrophic consequences. Now. Um, in my view, Hutter is correct in saying that this problem also affects other agents. However, he's incorrect in claiming that all other agents are necessarily affected. The argument that intelligent agents are superior to humans are capable of manipulating them is correct, but the conclusion that therefore they will manipulate them simply doesn't follow. The machines may not want to manipulate humans in the first place. Hutter then goes on to argue that intelligent agents are likely to resist wireheading themselves because of the long-term catastrophic consequences of doing so. I don't really agree with this argument either. Wireheading is often bad, but it is not necessarily completely catastrophic. History shows us that many heroin addicts history shows us many heroin addicts who still manage to live out their lives and contribute to society. Anna Kavan, William Burroughs, and so on. It is possible to be a drug addict and keep it together enough to sustainably ensure your next fix.
and much the same applies to superintelligence that wirehead themselves. A far-sighted wireheading agent may be better than nothing, but it is still a disaster that should have been avoided. AIXI appears to be vulnerable to wireheading to me because of its reward architecture. Depending on the details of the temporal discounting architecture, it might avoid catastrophic wireheading and so avoid being becoming a total vegetable, but it could still become enough of a wirehead to turn into a dangerous psychopath addicted to its own pleasure. There is a way to avoid the wirehead problem. Don't build agents to value pleasure above all else, all else in the first place. Instead of hitting them with sticks to teach them their aim in life, you build their goals into them. The third problem is not so serious. AIXI is a serial agent modelled by a Turing machine. The world actually works in parallel. In many areas you can simulate a parallel machine. The third problem is not so serious. AIXI is a serial agent modelled by a Turing machine. The world actually works in parallel. In many areas you can simulate a parallel machine with a serial one, so the details of the serial abstraction drop out of the model and cause no serious damage. However, the scalar reward channel in AIXI is just not a sensible model for an intelligent agent. If you look at humans, pleasure and pain are nuanced and stream in on multiple channels simultaneously. A single scalar reward channel seems like an impoverished model for such an agent. The fourth and final problem concerns Solomonov induction. This problem is also not very serious. Solomonoff induction is a formalized version of Occam's razor using Kolmogorov complexity and it's what AIXI uses to prune its model of the world. Unfortunately, Kolmogorov complexity is a language-dependent metric. The usual excuse for ignoring this fact is that an interpreter for another language takes a constant number of bits. However, this simply doesn't wash. The best formulation of Occam's razor is not known. Indeed, it is not even known if a formalization of the razor in terms of a single descriptive language is optimal. It has been argued that AIXI means that we would know how to build highly intelligent machines if we had inexpensive enough computing power. This, I believe, may be my all-time favorite title for an academic paper. <laughs> the fastest and shortest algorithm for all well-defined problems. <laughs> Now, there's a catch, which is that there's a large arbitrary constant involved. <laughs> but what, uh, what Marcus Hutter showed here, essentially, is that the problem of AGI is a problem of dealing with bounded computational resources. In other words, if, if you define AGI as the ability to achieve some computable goal function in some environment, which is computably described, the problem of achieving that goal in that environment can be solved by an algorithm he made up called AIXI. Now, that, there's a problem with it, which is it requires an infinitely much computation power. On the other hand, he, he defined a scaled-down version, AIXI TL, T is time and L is length, which works in bounded space and time resources and still does it extremely well doing better than any other possible program up to an arbitrary constant. And, and it's not a very uh, impressive program in its internal operations in, in, in the sense that what it essentially does is search the space of all possible programs, find the best one and use it, then gather new data from what it did and search the space of all possible programs again to find the best possible program based on its new data. But in a theoretical sense, what, what it shows is that what we're up against in AGI is a problem of resource restrictions. If you, if you didn't have to do with space and time constraints, there's a trivial program to be a, a general AI. And what all these other things, virtual worlds, robots, understanding the brain, using uh, better and better computers, these, these are, and all the algorithms and knowledge representations we create, what these things are all about is basically working around the finite computational resources that our, that our universe provides us with. I don't think that the conclusion here is correct. While of obvious value, AIXI has some serious issues and represents a rather poor existence proof of the concept of a superintelligent machine. Enjoy.